Hello and welcome to Good Evening Britain, a Force for Goods weekly show coming to you live from our studios here in the heart of the great British city of Glasgow with me, your host, Alistair McConaughey. And we're broadcasting throughout the United Kingdom and around the world on all our digital platforms, bringing you quality pro-UK comment and analysis on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on TikTok simultaneously. It's going to be a great show, and I'm so excited about it because at the bottom of the hour at 7.30, we have a fantastic and articulate guest coming on. It's none other than the legend who is Gold Eagle from Unity News. And I know that Gold Eagle has a good personal following and he always talks a lot of sense in his own inimitable and amusing way. So looking forward to speaking with Gold Eagle. That's at 7.30 and that will be for 20 minutes. And before then, folks, do send in your comments. As we said there, do send in your comments. Tell us what's on your mind. Tell us how your week has been. Tell us what's rubbing you up the right way or what's rubbing you up the wrong way. And we can discuss it and we can set the world to rights in the next hour. Because goodness me, we need to set the world to rights. Thanks to people on TikTok and also commenting. Love to hear from you. Tell us where you're watching from, folks. We've got Harry Brown, who says, Good evening, unionists everywhere. We've got Debbie, who says, Good evening, everyone. And we've got Adam Bray. Hello, Adam. How are you this evening? And Tommy, good to see Tommy and also Alan. And thank you for sending me that document, Alan, from the Scottish National Party that I've been looking at and reading with interest. The Scottish Nationalists produced a little booklet. I think they, they tried to copy our wee book for the Union, but goodness me, they made it in print. That's the smallest print I have ever seen. If you could imagine an old-fashioned newspaper with tiny little print in it, and then and then divide that by 10. That's how small the print would be. So literally nobody's going to read that Scottish nationalist uh, booklet that was sent to us, which is just as well because they would have only been made more foolish by it. They would not have learned anything of value. Um, Nathan, how are you? I hope everybody had a great Jubilee celebration. Well, absolutely, I hope you did. And if anybody did anything interesting around the Jubilee time, please tell us and we'll tell everybody. We did something interesting, which we'll get to in a minute. Kenny says, just read today that the SNP need a transfer of power to hold an Indiref without a Section 30. Well, they certainly want to hold uh, an Indiref. And what it was basically saying was uh, that Sturgeon is just going ahead with preparing for uh, another another uh, referendum and she she seems to be awfully brazen in talking about how she's going to hold it next year and you wonder just what quite is up up her sleeve at the moment um, on those sorts of matters because um you know it's not it's not physically possible for her to do it's, it's not legally possible for her to do it and there's the there is it's, that's the front of the national day scotland's Scotland's administration can can prepare for Indy. Well, it can prepare to try to fly to the moon, I suppose, as well. That doesn't actually mean everything. But what it then says here, it says exclusive. First Minister says Indy Ref will happen next year, whether Johnston's PM or not. That's very unusual. She knows she can't hold a legal one, so what's she playing at? Again, she's hoping that by the time next year rolls around, people will have forgotten that headline um, and she may well be right. She's maybe just playing around here with the idea that um, we'll just keep promising the carrot but never delivering it. But all this time, of course, all this time, what she's doing is uh, campaigning essentially against the United Kingdom and being negative towards it and bringing it down, bringing it down. And that's just all she wants to do. And that's all that they will do, unfortunately. Now, folks, please subscribe, please like and share 
this work. That's how we get around. That's how we reach new people, especially if you share it, whether on Facebook or or YouTube or retweet it on Twitter. If you retweet our our work, then uh, other people will see it. If you retweet it with a quote comment, then we can retweet that to even more people, to over 27 thousand people. Samuel says, good evening AFG. I hope everyone had a fantastic Platinum Jubilee. I do feel it unified the nation and Commonwealth like nothing else in the last 10 years. I believe it was so needed. I think so. I think so, Samuel. It created a lot of good vibes and that's so important. It's so important to create good vibes, even when you're creating negative, like especially when we have so many negative vibes being created as well. It's good to create good vibes it helps it helps everything you know it helps the planet basically good vibrations as they used to sing back in the 60s how must how much longer must we suffer under this assembly asks thomas well probably quite a while probably quite a while unfortunately so the best thing to do is just to get your one's mental state right and not let the bad news of every day bring you down to try to stand back from it to see the long view and you know the long view is so important and in our latest magazine union heart we quoted we quoted something that the queen had said she said it in a christmas broadcast in 2002 and we've put the wee heading here her majesty's recipe for living And she says, I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings and to put my trust in God. To take the long view, to give of my best, to try to do what is right and put your trust in God. And that's really where we're at at the moment, especially when we on planet Earth have such or it seems such bad politicians running us. But, you know, we'll always have bad politicians running us. That's just, unfortunately, the way of things. It's for us to to navigate through all the chaos and try to hold fast to the permanent things. Gosh, getting quite philosophical this evening. Frankie says, Nicola Sturgeon is not the first minister of Scotland. She's the first clown of Scotland. And Stephen says, the SNP don't want to debate the facts of Indy. That's why she is leaving the announcement of a date as long as possible. Adam says he'd laugh if Scot- Scot- or the Scottish Parliament unilaterally declared an Indy Ref 2 and it got shut down by the UK Supreme Court like Spain did to Catalonia. Well, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Would it get shut down or would we just stumble on as we always tend to do here in the United Kingdom? You know, we were out on Saturday with our street stall and we've got a few pictures here let's let's put up one of let's put up the first picture of our street stall and I want to say a big shout out thank you to the two ladies who came along to help myself there was myself there was Gillian and there was Catherine and thanks there we are in the center with several of the great British public around us very interested to see what we were saying that was that was on the Jubilee Saturday. That was on the 4th there. So we've got the flag flying high. That's myself and a lady who helped us. And again, beautiful day. And we got a lot of comments. Okay, let's put up another one and see that. Um, isn't that nice? That was our two flags. The one that's behind me at the moment plus. Well, both of them are behind me at the moment. And the wind caught it just at the time when the camera clicked the word loveliness in the background. And I thought that was, that was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. So, and that's also our two helpers with our magazine, which we launched happy and glorious. That's our 12 page magazine, Union Heart. But one of the things that came out of that meeting the public and everybody was everybody was nice. It was a really good day. We got lots of people at the table. Everybody's very friendly. A couple of Scottish nationalists had slightly bizarre opinions, which I'll share with you in a moment. But the main um, the main feeling really was people coming up to us wishing that there had been more of a thing going on in Glasgow, in the sense of at least it would have been easy enough for 
the council, for example, to have commandeered George Square and, and basically just had a family day. You know, people, charities could put up their tents and stick a bouncy castle in there, have a few things for the children and some burger vans and ice cream and so on. It doesn't take too much imagination. The council could easily have done it and they could have had some Union Jack banners. But oh no, they can't do it. And of course they make up these stupid excuses. But there's people living in poverty. We can't spend a single penny on the Jubilee. Oh, but you can spend 20 million. Put it aside and you can spend 20 million on a referendum for next year that's not going to happen. You know how little it would have cost to put on something in George Square and it would have paid for itself as far as economic activity in the centre of Glasgow was was concerned. It would easily have paid for itself. So when you hear politicians talking about they're not going to do something and then they use the poor as an excuse why they're not going to do it, you know they're full of it. You know they're full of it. And you know they're just not doing it because they politically and ideologically disagree with it. That's the only reason politicians will bring out the poor only in order to justify their own inaction. Oh, we're going to save, you know, £5,000 by not having an event in George Square. But, oh, we're going to spend £5,000 instead on a food bank, are we? No, of course they're not. They're just going to put it into somebody else's salary down at the city chambers. You know, one of these other over-remunerated jobs worth that basically trough at the endless trough which is the Scottish governmental sector. So that was their excuse. But one or two of the other cities were doing stuff. I know Edinburgh did something, Aberdeen did stuff as well. But unfortunately if you elect SNP Green people you will just get miserableism. You'll get the politics of miserableism which is all that the SNP and Greens are good for. They're not happy people. They're not uh, well balanced. They're just angry people man oh they are angry and you see that in our tiktok feed at the moment for example people people getting upset and angry and that's just the nature of their life well what i have to say to them is listen to what the queen said and just try to do your best try to do what is right take each day as it comes and put your trust in god adam says sturgeon was exposed as as being a unionist she held a union jack during the queen's jubilee didn't she just well do you know what I mean, I don't have a whole lot of love lost for Nicola Sturgeon, but there was a good, there was a good uh, comment that she made. Nicola Sturgeon, this is Nicola Sturgeon speaking, okay? Nicola Sturgeon, in an interview with the BBC, she said, quote, One of the things that I feel great respect for the Queen is just that dedication, that selfless commitment to duty and to service. Close quote. And then speaking about her conversations with the monarch, she said, quote, that opportunity to talk with her, to benefit from her knowledge, her wisdom, and perhaps above all, the unique perspective she has on modern world history is something that I deeply value and will always treasure. Close quote. And that's Nicola Sturgeon quoted in The National on the 6th of June, 2022. So we might We'll see. We might try to make sure that quote gets some greater traction because it certainly is a a good quote from what some people might say is an unlikely source. But as we always say, we like to see the best of everybody. We, we like to, to do that. While I was going through some stuff today, I also found a quote from Rod Stewart, which I like. It, writing in The Times on the 3rd of June 2022, Rod Stewart says... The monarchy is, the monarchy is, quote, a mainstay of British life, as strong now as it was in 1952. So that's Rod Stewart quoted in The Times, which is a nice, uh, nice comment. Mainstay of British life. That's a good phrase. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to remember it and we'll use it again at some point, because that's what is so important is so many journalists use big words to say very little. And you can actually sum up almost every thought mankind has ever had in probably less than 10 words, if you really think about it. And that's a good one. Mainstay of British life is the monarchy. Everybody knows what you mean by that as well. And it's got strength and value in those few words. Adam says, 
is 20 million on a referendum lawful? Well, do you know what? That's a very good point. And I know that Lord Folks is taking a position that this needs to be challenged. Lord Folks is a Labour peer and he's working at the moment to try to get the British government to stop giving money to the civil service if the civil service is going to use it to undermine the United Kingdom itself with a, such a political objective. And it should easily be something that they should be able to they should be able to to do if they have the if they have the moral stamina to stop the civil service doing this. The British government should be able to do it. The head of the British service the British Civil Service is a cabinet minister. So it's not too difficult. If the British government wants to stop Sturgeon spending the 20 million, they can do it. Why do they not stop her? Perhaps they're afraid of negative press publicity, which they would certainly get, of course, but they would just have to weather that. Now, we have got um, a great guest coming up at 7.30. It's Gold Eagle. You'll really enjoy Gold Eagle. He's a very intelligent very articulate spokesman for Unity News Network. And we've had people from Unity News Network on before. We've had David Clues and we've had Carl Pearson and we've had others. And we're looking forward to speaking with Gold Eagle, Gold Eagle tonight. We're also, of course, running our crowdfunder. We're running our crowdfunder at the moment and this is going to continue to run through right until the 29th of June. So folks... Where are we at the moment with our crowdfunder? We started it last week. Let's give you a running update on how much is sitting in the kitty at the moment. There we go. Crowdfunder totalizer our raise so far £875, which is 35% of our 2.5k total that we're aiming for to get us through to the end of November, to get us through the next five months. And so let's um, let's revisit that figure at the end of the show and maybe we'll have hit over 1k you know on another 125 pounds tell you what we'll do let's just keep the wee kick uh, the wee ticker running along the bottom and um that's all we need to be running at the moment good paul halford is hopeful that a scottish second breaking up the uk referendum will never happen if they don't care about the four and a half billion audit scotland can't find that's right it's a bottomless pit once you give money to the snp it's a bottomless pit stuart wonders if anybody else has noticed that reporting scotland is not giving the scottish nationalists such an easy ride well i'm glad to hear it um it's only been 20 years um so maybe something has changed let's hope so and Alan asked, did anyone see how George Folks got on today? He was going to raise the issue about the SNP spending money. Well, I, yes, he was going to raise it, and I believe that he probably did raise it, but he only in the sense of giving a speech in the House of Lords on the matter. So if we get a copy of his speech, we'll use that on our Facebook page. We'll try to publicise it. If we find it on Twitter, we'll try to publicize it as well it's time for our on this day british history matters and british history matters because you don't know where you're going if you don't know where you are and you don't know where you are if you don't know where you've been so on that thought it was on this day 8th of june in 1946 a year after the war ended that George the Sixth sent a personalised message to every school child in the United Kingdom and possibly in the Commonwealth, but I certainly know that in the United Kingdom. And we've got a picture of the letter. There it is there. Now, some of you will have that as a family heirloom. And a th thanks to Finlay for sending his copy of it that, belonged presumably to his one of his parents, sent that to us. And let me just read it out. It says, Today, as we celebrate victory, I send this personal message to you and all other boys and girls at school, for you have shared in the hardships and dangers of a total war. 
and you have shared no less in the triumph of the Allied nations. I know you will always feel proud to belong to a country which was capable of such supreme effort. Proud, too, of parents and elder brothers and sisters who by their courage, endurance and enterprise brought victory. May these qualities be yours as you grow up and join in the common effort to establish among the nations of the world unity and peace. May these qualities be yours courage, endurance, and enterprise. That's, that's, a, nice, that's a nice document. And it, it was in this shape. It was simply just a, a piece of paper like this on good, on good quality, on good quality paper and in full color. And every child got a copy of that. Some of you might have that copy yourselves at home. And that, that was on that was given to children on this day, eighth of June in nineteen forty six. And also on this day, on the eighth of June, we wish a very happy birthday to a great British songstress by the name of Gaynor Hopkins. Now she's better known to the world as the one and only, the great Bonnie Tyler. And there she is. And isn't that a stunning picture of Bonnie Tyler from her Faster Than the Speed of Night album? Now, Bonnie was born on this day in 1951 in Wales to a coal miner Gwinder and Mother Elsie. And according to Wikipedia, her family were, quote, deeply religious Protestants. Her first public performance took place in a chapel as a child, singing the Anglican hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. And of course, she had hits with Lost in France and It's a Heartache in the late 70s. But it wasn't until she signed with CBS and Jim Steinman started writing songs for her that it was at that point that um, her voice was able to achieve its full potential in some best-selling albums and, of course, the amazing hit single Total Eclipse of the Heart. Okay, and so that Total Eclipse of the Heart, that was number one in 1983. And I thought that was a great song. I still think it's a great song, and I've actually got most of her albums. And to this day... Bonnie Tyler continues to perform and produce new content. And she says that her favourite song is Tina Turner's River Deep, Mountain High. But here's the thing. Not many people know the song for which Tina Turner is famous, Simply the Best. That was actually a Bonnie Tyler song. Bonnie Tyler released that song on her album. She released it as a single from her Hide Your Heart album. And I've got the cassette here, 1988. So she released that in 1988 and Tina Turner heard it and found it, heard it and turned it into the classic that we know today. But it was actually a Bonnie Tyler song. And you know what? She should get more credit for that. Bonnie Tyler should get more credit for that amazing song. Simply the best. We're simply the best. And she's simply the best. Fantastic singer. Born on this day in 1951 in a place called Skewen, S-K-E-W-E-N, in Wales. Okay, now I can see that the one and only Gold Eagle is in the studio, and I'm going to bring Gold Eagle in in just a minute. Let us now go to our man Gold Eagle. Hello there, Gold Eagle. Good evening. Good evening, Alistair, and good evening to fellow unionists. Fantastic. Well. I'm very well indeed. And I is that your studio that you're in at the moment with the that it is. The screen behind you? Yeah, it, it is. But uh, uh, Mr. Clues is using the uh, software tonight. So I couldn't uh, I, I was going to put something posh behind uh, uh, like like he does, you know, a, a, a nice apartment. But uh, no, uh, uh, it's just just a, a creased old green screen uh, uh, I've got at the moment. Good. Well, Gold Eagle, 
maybe you could um, just introduce yourself to our viewers by answering the question, who is Gold Eagle? Good evening. I am Gold Eagle. Gold Eagle calling. That's one of my taglines. I'm, I'm a great believer in these, the old taglines of the 80s, you know, good game, good game, nice to see you, to see you nice and things like that. And uh, I'm trying, trying to get a few, a, a few of these lines going on my show. Um, I was born in 1965. Uh, which makes me nearly 57 years old. Um, same. Uh, are you the same as well? Yes. Look, oh, my d goodness, you look... We, we both obviously uh, 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 bathed in the same fountain of youth. That We look younger younger th than we are. <laughs> well, we, we both bathed in the same fountain of wisdom anyway, because I think 80s children are people who sort of came of age in the 80s. You know, I've got their heads screwed on, generally speaking unless they're running the government, of course. But generally speaking, we've got our heads screwed on. We had a good uh, a good life. The world seemed to be quite optimistic. Everything was kind of seemed to be sorting itself out slowly. Um, and there was good programs on the telly and there was good music. And yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the Bonnie Tyler uh, uh, as well. I, I didn't actually know that Jim Steinman was writing the words. I, I, I love Jim. It was Jim Steinman's words that more so um, than the Meatloaf uh, lyrics. Yes, uh, not for that particular one though. He didn't write. Uh, he didn't write. Uh, um, simply the best. No, but no. It uh, was him wrote... that wrote like Total Eclipse of the Heart, Holding Out for a Hero, stuff yeah. like that. The stuff it's that really take. propelled him. Was, was that one of his as well? Sorry. It's a heartache. Was that one of his as well? No, no. That no. was prior to the CBS Jim Steinman era. Right. But yeah, yeah, you're quite right, Alistair. I mean, when, when we were growing up, we had, you know, everything was brilliant. Uh, a lot of people online say, you know, which year would you like to go back in time? If you had a time machine, when would you like to go back to? And I think I, I would like to go back to the 80s uh, and, you know, at, still at my age now and obviously not, not, not come forward uh, into this time where we've got so much going on at the moment. Uh, um, I, I was listening to uh, uh, the start of your show and uh, it is crazy when uh, you were talking about the, the 20 million uh, that uh, uh, they've, they've set aside for this uh, REF2 and uh, the fact that they, they, they won't... Uh, they're very happy to if you were all black uh, or a minority or or, or something uh, you know if you were maybe uh, saying you know let's um, uh, talk about trans and things like that they would have happily laid on all bunting and everything they'd have most probably given you a budget to go uh, uh, you know for, for 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 promoting force of good and uh, uh, you know uh, not only myself but uh, uh, David uh, and and everyone I think at, at UNN I uh, think you do a really good job at, at force for good uh, and uh, you know this uh, the, the union the, the the keeping together of the union I think is uh, extremely important one of the um, comments I can't read the comments now because I've turned uh, uh, my, my live feed off so I can't see what people are actually saying but uh, one of the earlier comments was saying that the jubilee came at a time when everything is you know th there's so much on with uh, uh, the monarchy uh, and mrs gold eagle calls it the monarchy pox uh, that, that, uh, that that she caught but uh, uh, th there has been so much uh, going on with uh, the things with andrew um, uh, and, and even back in the 80s i remember when uh, diana hello debbie beer that's, that's good. We've got it. We've got it popped on. Uh, with Unity News, my show, uh, I actually only just came in as a stand in for uh, Carl when Carl left. And one of the things, because I was in chat all the time, uh, it's the interaction with with everybody. So this is I, I love your show because uh, you, you also do the same as well. Alistair. You read out you read out the comments. And uh, I think it's uh, really thank thank you, Nelson. Uh, uh, I, I'm glad I'm glad I am liked. I, I am hated as well. But uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, who's who hates you? I can't imagine MD hates you. Come on. Well, uh, what's good is is people are very quick to tell you how much to, how much they hate you. You know, mm. uh, that's there. Good evening, Harry. Hi, hi, everybody. What's your analysis of the current situation in Scotland? 
Well, this is this is why it's so important. Uh, I mean, it's the same in Wales. We've we've got exactly in Wales. I'm, I'm I used to live in Cardiff, and I live outside Cardiff now. But we had to move because uh, rents just shot up, uh, and so moving outside of a big city, rents become cheaper. And we've we've got we've got Drakeford uh, in in Wales, and uh, you know he he can't even tell you what a woman is. You know that 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 sort of should should tell you uh, uh, something about it. Uh, so uh, the Welsh and the Scots, we've always had an affinity together. Uh, it used to be our hatred of the English uh, in, <laughs> in rugby and football uh, because we were sort of like on, on your side, but especially in the rugby as well. We'd want you we'd want you always to beat England. Uh, and uh, but there is now an affinity because we're both got. Uh, um, uh, this crazy uh, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, who I, I, I sort of like, I, I liken her to a bit like uh, Angela Merkel. You know, she's sort of this raised by power. And, and the same with Mark Drayford as well. They seem to be carried away by it. And some of the things, I remember the re- referendum one, uh, and uh, some of the things that were coming out, uh, all lies about, uh, oh, they're going to run out of oil in the North Sea. Oh, this is going to happen. You know, if you all, oh, oh. and, uh, you know, if you believe everything that's in the media, uh, and I think this is the trouble, is that the media seem to like Drakeford. The media seem to like Nicola Sturgeon and uh, it's a little bit different in Wales because Wales you could put a sheep up for a Labour candidate Mm -hmm. and they would vote they would vote for it because their father voted Labour and their father's father voted Labour Um, and I think it's a little bit different in Scotland people do look at uh, at at policies and things and I, I think it's not so much Nicola Sturgeon as horrible as she is I think it's the way that she's portrayed in the media uh, you know, when she's not called out. Uh, I, I remember when uh, um, it was not long ago with um, uh, the uh, Alex Salmond uh, and that sort of, uh, um, what's it called, uh, a uh, when there's a controversy. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it sort of, rather than pushing them at questions, uh, you know, uh, and, and calling her out, everything, because... You know, there's, there's things that we in the alternative media can say, you know, why is this lady still in power? Why are people still, you know, wanting to choose her? Why are they wanting? Uh, I mean, this this referee too, it's uh, mm. I, I, you know, mm. I'm, I, I'm sort of with you guys on that. You know, I really uh, does it. TC, TC, I haven't seen you for ages uh, as a, a, a Unity News uh, member. I used to talk to uh, TC in chat. Uh, on uh, UNM. And, and in fact, my Wednesdays was always a force for good. And then as soon as a force is good, uh, I'd, I'd go over to Unity News and then go go and watch that. Fantastic. Uh, uh, well, because how often do you broadcast? Because just talk to us about your, your program that you've got yeah. and how often that's on. Well, Unity News Network now broadcasts seven days a week. We've got five uh, lunchtime shows. Uh, Oliver, Oliver, uh, Oliver, Oliver Down uh, mm-hmm. uh, has since left, uh, and his shows have been taken over by uh, a young boy on the Monday called James Harvey from Students Against Tyranny. Uh, it's a re- really good show. Then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have Sean Finch from Delivering Liberty. Uh, and uh, he's a, a, a London based uh, um, and he does lots of reports. Uh, he was covering uh, when uh, Boris Johnson uh, was having that vote. Uh, he was there and trying to interview everyone as they were they were coming out. Got two or three good interviews uh, uh, with people. Uh, and then on a Friday, we've got Anthony Weber, uh, who is uh, he, he's a bit like an old schoolmaster uh, on there. He's a political commentator, does a lot of work with uh, RT. Uh, and then in the evenings, we've got Gold Eagle on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Right. Uh, so I've taken over Carl's slots. Uh, and then right. on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on the Sunday, uh, we've got the Emperor, David Clues. <laughs> well, good. You've got a, a good uh, team there that's that's building up and a good uh, number of viewers as well who are reaching out to just find alternative takes on things. I mean, when did you realise that there was such a thing as an alternative take on the reality that we are meant to accept um, by the mainstream media, for want of a better term? Have you always been a little bit sceptical of what well, you're told or did, was, it, was there a wake-up moment? 
Uh, Mrs. Gold Eagle actually woke me up and she asked me if I wanted a red pill or a blue pill. Uh, and and I, I thought she was getting frisky. You know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what I, you know, I had seen The Matrix. So that was what she was on about. But I, I, I didn't cotton on. I'm a, I am a little bit. You, you said I was intelligent before, which I, I take that as a compliment. But uh, I, I am um, one of your people in chat said he's a, a normal bloke. That's all I am. I'm just I'm just, I'm just Mr. Normal. Uh, so Mrs. Gold Eagle uh, woke me up. Hi, Susie Davis. Yeah, uh, he's actually Carl hasn't left completely. He's just taking a big back step. Uh, you've got to remember that Carl is very young, Alistair, and uh, he still wants a career. And I'm unfortunately, quite right. yeah. When, when you talk out uh, about things, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it, you can be uh, attacked and they can use this as a weapon against you. But uh, uh, to, to get back to uh, myself and my, my awakening, so um, Mrs. Gold Eagle, uh, my lovely wife, she uh, uh, woke me up. Uh, uh, there used to be a, a radio program. It was called The People's Voice or something like that. And you had like the likes of David Icke, Brian Gerrish, um, oh, who else is there? Uh, Richie Allen, uh, all, all these bit. Mark Windows, I think, was there as well. Windows on the World. All these great people. And uh, I, I did start to question everything. Uh, and uh, I remember when that first referendum, the Scottish referendum was on, uh, was the first time I got angry about anything because uh, the, uh, there was a, a commentator for the BBC and I was listening online to where he was interviewing Alex Salmond and it went on for about 30 minutes. He asked him about 10 questions. And then on the nine o'clock news, I watched the same programme and the same journalist said, I asked Alex Salmond the question about such and such and such, and he refused to answer. And it was like, no, he didn't. I, I listened to that live. You, you're mm. lying. Um, and uh, I, I started doing some activism. Uh, Mrs. Gold Eagle was in a group called Anon, Anonymous, where she used to wear, uh, uh, you know, this Guy Fawkes uh, uh, mask. Oh, just to change the subject as well, because I do, I do sort of chop and change. Uh, you were saying about Lord Folks, and I was thinking he, he's a guy, isn't he? <laughs> guy Folks. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, li little things like that. I try and put a bit of comedy uh, on it because you know things are, are really so silly that they are actually quite funny. And oh, I, yeah. I'm surprised that there aren't more comedians, right wing comedians, that are taking the mickey out of the the madness that's going on uh, yeah the... I, I don't that's a good point i don't quite know why that is but i think um well maybe, maybe people who are that way inclined have got better things to do maybe they've got jobs they've got families you know they're just keeping the head down keeping the nose clean just trying to lead a normal life i suppose if you're Maybe I'm just generalising, but I don't know to what extent people who are more conservative and traditionalist in their view are are, are likely to go into those sorts of uh, entertainment and art and so on. I think there's maybe an imbalance there somewhere. I, I, I'm just presuming that. I don't really know. But or, as you say, there's so much be, scope for it. It could be that the media and the agenda are manipulating it in such a way that if you have a wrong opinion that you're not actually shown, you know, that you can't like oh. take the mickey out of Nicola Sturgeon because, you know, that would be bad for her. Um, Mrs. That's Gold absolutely Eagle, true, yeah. yeah. Mrs. Gold Eagle's just come in and said, I forgot to mention as well, on the, sat on the Saturday, uh, we have the Admiral, uh, uh, Darren, uh, and he has a, a completely different show uh, because he doesn't want to do politics. He's just there for uh, to... to to, to look at to look at things conspiracies and stuff like that but to have a break from the agenda uh, on there and that's a saturday show that goes on forever and ever and ever i think his longest one he's done so far is about nine hours long <laughs> he, he does he, 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 he does marathons and um, what what i i started to call it was it was uh, watch watch a man get drunk uh, show because he's, he's drinking it's called drinks with d um, <laughs> okay it's, it's a bit like pints very... pints with nigel on GB News, Talking Pints, that's what Nigel Farage calls his show, and it's probably just as well that it only lasts for 20 minutes, because yeah. I can imagine did, did, you wouldn't want to give Alistair, Nigel too many. That, did you see that clip of uh, Nigel Farage with his Union Jack shoes, his pound coin cufflinks, uh, his uh, little little Union Jack bow tie? Have you seen that? I haven't seen that one, no, no, no but good. I can I, imagine I, it. I, I, 
<laughs> I, I, I'll e- email you. But it, it is very pa- pa- patriotic, and mm. uh, it, it was was very good. I mean, obviously, we could talk about Nigel Farage uh, for quite a while, but uh, uh, with brexit uh, uh on there my own opinion on brexit red pill blue pill i took the purple pill i voted ukip good ideas but very divided party thank you paul hadlow uh, so, as i say sorry to read that one out alistair <laughs> by all means. I, I can't i can't help it but uh, it, it's an involvement with the audience mm. uh, but yeah uh, I mean, Brexit for me, it was sort of like uh, one one kind of poo or another kind of poo. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't like the rules that, that Europe bring in about bananas and stuff like that. Um, but yet uh, the, 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 the European Union does keep uh, the, the, the bank, the, the city of London in, uh, in control. Uh, so, you know, it's sort of like with Brexit, it was when I first started watching uh, uh, Unity News and it was one of those ones that, you know, it, it, it was it wasn't a decision that, you know, I, that I had really one way or the other uh, because it didn't really change my life as such uh, in there. But uh, uh, I, I, I think as well that the fact that we came out of Brexit, but we really didn't, that also uh, uh, was the, the sort of way that I was feeling as well. Oh well, as far as Brexit's concerned, there's a lot, a lot of opportunities haven't yet been properly grasped, and we always said at the time it's because the political establishment at the day didn't want that result. They were, for whatever reason, content just to meander on in just this general, um, uh, with under the control or largely the instructions of the European Union, and then when this sort of revolution happened. The politicians, all of them, on all parties, were caught um, by surprise and are still recovering from it. And and one of the reasons we know that is because they haven't yet taken full advantage of stuff. I mean, there's lots of things they could have done. They could have abolished VAT, for example. VAT was only set up by us uh, because we had to, because it was a European Union requirement. And when I was campaigning back in the day, I would say, oh, you could leave the European Union and we could abolish VAT which was technically absolutely 100% correct and remains so. But we left the European Union and nothing happened with the VAT. I don't know if it's been put up or down or whatever, but, I mean, nothing's much has changed, nothing of any. And so there's been no big policy issues that they've said, hey, now we're out, we're doing this, this and this, three things, major things which are going to change the direction of the economy and our culture and so on. It's just It's all just like, it's as if there's really no imagination. I think lack of imagination is a real problem among the political class and then they they hitch on to crazy things like you know whatever happens to be the latest cultural strange weird agenda you know which only affects like a minority of people or something like that so just very sad really but we we as unionists we always say to people that we're not unionists because we love the per, the particular government that's in power in Britain at the moment because we know that we're always going to be disappointed with a government whatever stripe they are we just love britain we love the idea of the unity of all the people of britain from north south east and west we love that idea of solidarity and working together and staying together and developing shared cultural and social bonds and so on and those things are enabled by the union by the political union when you when you break it up into four different political bodies it is harder to 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 join socially and culturally and in other ways. So we like the United Kingdom. It doesn't mean we like the particular party or politicians in power, whoever they may be. And goodness me, we know that they're not doing a good job about lots of things. But again, you've got to take the long view because if you allow each day to upset you with everything that's happening in the world, then you just become a nervous wreck. So you've got to stand back, take the long view and be a lot cooler about it. And and I think I like what you do at UNN as well. You're clearly not somebody that's like totally intensely um, um, dominated by what's happening in the world out there. Well, well so, actually, I, I am. Cause, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> at the moment because i am normal uh petrol for the moment uh, i mean it was in the in, oh, like, on, mm, on the news yeah. at the moment up up to two pounds i mean I, I paid 179 so that's up 7p in the last week uh and uh i was looking at a comparison with the price of the barrel of oil uh, and how much petrol was uh, uh 10 years ago 
uh, and how much it is now, which is actually less and it's more expensive. So I don't understand why more people aren't sort of getting angry. Why aren't we getting a little bit French, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, starting to say, hang on a second, you know, the, the, the cost of living is going up. We're not getting recuperated with higher wages. You know, this isn't good. I've got less money in, in my pocket uh, and, I, and I'm finding it at, at the with my shopping. I, I, I do the shopping and uh, literally, right, we're £1.70 for a loaf of bread. Mm. It, it, you know, it, it's uh, everything is going up. And there's so many things in the world that we can be getting angry about. Uh, I mean, you've got agendas at the moment going on with the, uh, the, the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Uh, you, you've got other things as well happening in America. There's things with um, uh, that I can't talk about because on YouTube, if I did talk about it, you might get a strike or uh, cut, cut off, um, which on DLive is really good because you can just say what you're thinking rather mm-hmm. than having self self uh, censor yourself. But I don't understand why people aren't getting more cross about it because, you know, prices are high. <laughs> you know, what's going yes. on? Yes, yes. Well, it's a good point. I don't have an answer to that, really. Um, but you're certainly right about how the prices have gone up. You know, I, I don't have a car. I get the bus. And uh, every two years, they put the bus fare up like, you know, five pence at the most. And I got on it yesterday, and they put it up 15 pence overnight, which is like a big increase. I mean, that's a big increase. That 15 pence increase would normally take six or seven years before that had worked through. But no, it just whacked it on you. I was like... Okay, now, I mean, there'll be people for whom they need to be getting on the bus every single day, several times probably, and uh, that's going to really cut in. That's going to start to be as expensive as a car if they're not careful. And it's all happening at the same time as well as that we've been told on all sides that, oh, we've got to cut back on on, on oil consumption as well. Um, but that's, uh, that's... And of course, if you cut back on oil consumption, you don't have anything else to power the buses, then of course it's going to get more expensive you know anyway um samuel says well said alistair and gold eagle could not agree more good good well thank you it's it's nice when people agree with you (laughs) it is i like that it's much better than when they disagree with you (laughs) well uh, i think the agenda oh we've still got time um we've got uh, just a couple of minutes uh we'll oh, wind, okay. wind down yeah I, I was i was just going to make a point about uh how we start introducing the uh electric uh with the, with the batteries and it was just because a, a friend of mine uh has a um a, an electric car to travel up to scotland you've got to stop twice with the electric car and each time you stop you've got to charge it for 45 minutes and it's in a supermarket. You've got to wait for the person. If there's someone using uh, using it, you've got to do. So this travel time from uh, uh, from Wales to Scotland, uh, which can be done in the guy's uh, normal car, um, uh, with, which isn't electric, can be done all in one journey with a bit of a tank left. Uh, mm, it, mm. it was just a point about, because you were saying about the buses and the cost, the cost oh, yeah. increasing. Yeah. Absolutely, and it was going to, it's going to go back like to the 1960s when the journey time from Wales to Scotland took, you know, about, I don't know, about 20 hours or something like that. It was like a major, a major family event, travelling along all these little B roads and the car breaking down four or five times and then getting a flat and all that sort of stuff. And finally you get back to Scotland after this massive adventure that took you ages and like children of the 60s and 70s know what I'm talking about. But we'll be back to those days where it's like, oh, I can't be bothered traveling because it's going to like literally from here to there is going to be hours and hours and hours when you factor in everything else. Stephen says, excellent chat. Thank you. We'll look up Unity News. Well, let's just put the the DLive address on there. Um, there it is, dlive.tv forward slash Unity News. And just once again, before we bid farewell, you're on what times and what days? Uh, I'm I'm on eight o'clock. So every weekday it's on at eight o'clock. It uh, goes on till um, half nine, ten, half ten, something like that, depending on how much news there is. Um, uh, I'm on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the Emperor David Clues is on a Monday, Wednesday and the Friday. And then he's on the Sunday as well. Good stuff. Tuesdays and Thursdays to see Gold Eagle of Unity News on dlive.tv. Gold Eagle, thank you very much for 
your thoughts. That's um, 27 minutes have gone uh, very, very quickly. So much more that we can talk about and hopefully so much more that we will talk about at a future date. But just to say more power to your elbow and to the great UNN team there. And on that, thank you once again and we'll bid you farewell. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Good stuff. Cold Eagle of dlive.tv forward slash unity news a great thinker and speaker and activist good stuff Catherine says thanks gold eagle I'll look you up as does Alan says thanks and does Samuel Nelson says great chat Alistair and gold eagle that was really enjoyable really enjoyed that Thank you. Thank you. Must have Gold Eagle back again. So much to speak about. And somebody says, fantastic interview. Great. Good to see Derek in the house. Good, good. Now, we're going to be out this Saturday. We're going to be out with these, with a street stall in the Royal Mile. And that will be an appropriate place to be distributing these at our street stall. And you can, well, you can pick up one at our street stall free of charge. And we're going to be in Edinburgh. And if you'd like to join us, by all means, you can contact us and tell us you're coming. Or you can simply turn up. We are going to be probably outside the St. Giles Cathedral area. And we're going to be there from 12 noon until probably 2.30. There's a big march on going down the Royal Mile from the back of one as well. So if you're in the area, you want to be conscious that that's going on as well. But we'll be in the Royal Mile from 12 noon until 2.30 this Saturday, the 11th. And hopefully we'll see one or two of you there. Please come along, show some solidarity, and we'll have another great day of activism. And as I say, we're out every day this summer. Sorry, we're out every day this June, and we're out several weekends in each of the months, going right through to autumn. Good stuff. Well, that's a nice comment from Stephen. Where has this hour gone? Such a great show. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for that. And that's much appreciated. And there we go. Kiyoshi Kawashi says, Interesting points raised tonight. VAT needs to go. It's a scam. And I second that emotion. Kiyoshi. Absolutely second that emotion. Good to see Rylan. Everything's going well, Rylan. Thanks for contacting us. We're going to be in Edinburgh in the Royal Mile for everybody to see at our street stall. By all means, if you're in town, we'll be there between noon and 2.30 this Saturday, somewhere outside St. Giles Cathedral with a great team. Good stuff. Now, it just remains here to remind everybody about our crowdfunder. It's running until the 29th of September. We're trying to raise 2500 And we'll put, that's the link there, crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash P forward slash Union 2022. Now, we'll also put the link up in the comments and you can go straight to it. And we've got some really good prizes, uh, some really nice um, mugs and some really nice hats. I'll just run you through one or two of the prizes right now. Stitched, well, rewards, shall we say. We've got a red stitched AFFG cap, which you'll be able to find. And we've also got pictures of the mugs. We've got a Falklands mug because, of course, it's the Falklands um, anniversary, 40 years um, there we go 40th anniversary lest we forget that's a reward as is this nice red mug Queen Elizabeth's Jubilee and a blue mug as well good stuff excellent 
Excellent stuff, folks. I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. Now, it just... It's five past. It's five past, so the hour has gone. We're going to call it to a close. To remind you, we'll be back next Wednesday, same time, 7 and 8, 7 to 8, across all our digital platforms. So it just remains for me to say, God bless the United Kingdom, and God save the Queen. See you next week.